This is an introductory tutorial on using Microsoft Excel Solver to be able to solve optimization problems, especially those that might be relevant for scientists and engineers. What we're going to do is go to the apmonitor.com website, and if you select slash uh, CHE263, you'll be able to come to this uh, Excel Solver page. And uh, let me just uh, make this a little bit bigger here. If you download this spreadsheet, you'll be able to start um, you go ahead and be able to start with the same example problem um, that I'm starting with here for this example. Okay, so I've uh, obtained this. Let me go ahead and unzip this. I'll extract it just to my desktop. And uh, let's open this up. And we'll have the uh, kind of the, the basic example that we want to be able to solve here. Um, I'll click Enable Editing. It warns me if it came from the Internet. Um, Okay, so here's my uh, nonlinear programming uh, problem with Excel. I'm actually going to open up OneNote uh, briefly just to be able to describe this problem. I want to try to minimize um, this objective function here. Um, okay, so it's a nonlinear objective function, and you can see I have four variables. I have x1, x2, x3, and x4. Okay, and each of those are here in this objective function. And then I also have two constraints. One is an inequality constraint, so the product of all of those variables has to be greater than or equal to 25. And then I also have the sum of squares. That has to equal 40. Okay, and then all of these x1 through x4 have to be between 1 and a value of 5. Okay, and then we're also going to start with um, initial guess of 1, 5, 5, and 1. So x1 will be 1, x2 will be 5, and so on. Okay, so we want to be able to solve this problem with Excel and uh, be able to minimize um, this objective function. So let me go back uh, to Excel now. And I have this uh, written out um, you know, just in the x1 through x4 form. I've got to translate this into the cell references here. What I'm going to do first of all is just give my initial guess values. So I'll do 1, 5, 5, and 1. Okay, now let me go ahead and just compute um, the objective here. So if I select this cell and just type equals, and then uh, that's going to be x1, and then times x4, and then times, don't forget the opening parentheses here, x1 plus, and that's x2. Uh, plus x3, okay, and then plus x3 at the end. Okay, so there I have an objective function of 16. And then I also have two constraints. One down here is an inequality constraint. It has to be greater than 25, so I'm just going to do the left-hand side of this. So this is just going to be the product um, of all of those cells. So I've got the first one, second, and you can see as I as I build this, you can see the, the highlighting of the colors there. It just helps me be able to see um, you know, what, what I'm doing here, which cells I've, I've referenced. Now that one is satisfied. It's greater than uh, or equal to you know, the, in, in nonlinear programming problems with, uh, you know, without integer values, those two are the same. Greater than or greater than or equal to. Okay, so that one is satisfied. But let's go ahead and compute this next one. Okay, this is just the sum of the squares. Okay, of all of these, um, all of these four values. Okay, so I'm just going to add those up, and you'll see that that does not equal 40. So we need to be able to find the best value of the objective function um, by and observing those two constraints. So the inequality, inequality. Then we also have a lower and upper bounds. So to access Excel or to the Excel solver, just go ahead and click Data and then Solver. And if you don't have the solver available, uh, what you need to do is come over to File and then go Options. And then you'll see uh, in here you'll see Add-ins. Okay, and then within Add-ins you can select uh, you know the solver add-in and then add that uh, if you don't have that available already. Okay, so if you do have it available, you can come over here and select Solver. It'll bring up this dialog box. Okay, now I've already have this selected, but if you want to select which objective 
you want. You can select, uh, in this case, our objective there. I want to minimize that. You can also maximize it to, to a certain value. In this case, I just want to minimize. And then I want to be able to change those four uh, cells right here. Okay, So I'm going to input those four. And then I have some constraints. So in this case, I had B14 is, gr is greater than or equal to, um, in this case, D14. OK, so this cell right here, I, I shouldn't have highlighted that one uh, or selected it. And then I had my, my next one, which was my equality constraint. And then I had um, also my, OK, in this case, I had uh, uh, less than or equal to 5. I'm just going to delete this one just to show how I can add these uh, lower bounds. OK, so I'm going to add a constraint. And then my cell references are going to be these values right here. And I'm going to say that those are greater than or equal to. Now, they're all the same, so I can, I can do this. Um, and then I can just put a value of 1 there, for example. OK, so I have all of my constraints. Um, a lot of times, this is selected by default. Um, I like to just unselect that, because that just says make unconstrained variables non-negative. Uh, that's tricked me a couple times. Okay, it's still selected. I don't understand why variable's not going negative when it should. Okay, and then uh, you can click Solve. Okay, and then it gives you the option to either keep the solver solution or restore the original values. Um, and then there are also some reports here. I'm just going to go ahead and select uh, just the answer and sensitivity uh, reports. Or you can also save a scenario, for example, if you're doing a some what-if scenarios. Okay, so it, it generated these answer reports. These are new tabs. It shows, you know, how many, um, you know, the iterations, the time that it took to to solve, uh, the sensitivity report. If you have some constraints uh, that are active, it'll show a reduced gradient, for example. And then for the inequality and the quality constraints, it'll show the Lagrange multipliers as well. Now those are uh, called shadow prices or the cost of having that constraint there. If you were to relax it by one, that's how much better your objective function could become. Okay, so um, I'm going to come back to my sheet here. Now those were the values that it came up with, and that is the objective function value. Okay, and uh, you can see that both of my constraints are satisfied. So that's the optimal solution, and that is a brief tutorial with Microsoft Excel. We also have other examples in the following videos on this playlist that show how to solve this same problem with both MATLAB and then also Python.